Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome mm -hmm. to episode number 90 with Jack Magella. We're going to talk about art shows. So if you're interested in learning more about art shows, Jack's the man who's going to teach us. But first, uh, I want to talk to you about the four weeks to proficiency in photography. That is our what we call our signature course because it's where we try to start everyone. The first class we teach you how to shoot in the manual mode and it honestly it's not that tough. Our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical and we really do. So it's a four week class. It's online, but it's live. I'm right there with you. Well, if you have questions, you can ask during the, you know, the time of the class. And then of course we have a lot of support. You have homework you have to turn in so you get a little bit of critiquing. I'm nice, don't worry. <laughs> but you're gonna get a really solid foundation in photography. Once you get the foundation, everything else becomes easier. So that starts June 5th, which is this week, or Tuesday anyway. So um, the four weeks to proficiency in photography, all of our online classes are on sale for the summer. So we're only offering the four weeks twice. So now is the time to do it, June 5th. Um, also, we have announced our trips for the next season. They're on our meetup site, meetup.com slash understand photography, soon to be on our website. <laughs> but the two classes, or the two trips I want to talk about, ladies only, of course, we're also doing co-ed trips. Joe Fitzpatrick leads those. I lead the, only, the ladies only trips. Two of them, I, I kind of have short, shorter notices this year. I really want to go back to Cuba, and I wanted to do a ladies-only trip to Cuba February 2nd through the 9th, 2019, but it took forever to, for the tour guides to get back to me with pricing and things like that. So I just found out, you know, week, week, two weeks ago, that we can do it, but you got to let me know. I have to have a firm six ladies committed before I actually will announce it because it's very small margins on this on this trip. So email me at, at Peggy at understandphotography.com or call 239-263-7001 and let me know, you know if you're interested, how interested you are and that kind of stuff. We also are moving our Mount Dora ladies trip which is only a two night stay but it's we stay in a fabulous bed and breakfast in Mount Dora, Florida but we're moving that to December, December 5 through the 7 because we want to hit the Christmas lights this time and that trip I've been doing that I think seven or eight years everybody loves it but it is a different time so I have to have the hotel reservations in a little bit earlier so again let me know so more information is on understandphotography.com or our meetup site so welcome Jack Magella hi how are you? Oh, just fine. I'm oh, glad to see your <laughs> smiling face. <laughs> and you are mostly a nature photographer. Uh, yes, I'm primarily. Primarily. Mm -hmm. And you have a nice story. Okay, and I met you actually at an art fair. I uh -huh. don't know if you remember when I met you. I remember when I met oh, you. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember you running around different places like the Naples Art Association. You were that person with the camera. Think, Who the heck is this? You know, <laughs> always sticking a camera in people's faces. And that's, that's, that's been a long time ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. I used to work for your wife sometimes too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Because she did the art that, shows. That, that's, that's right. Isn't that something? That's right. Uh, yeah. Forgot all about and that. I miss her. She's awesome. Uh, yeah, she is. You got yeah. lucky when you got married. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> All right, now you were a police officer. Yes. Uh -huh. And then yeah. you retired. Yes. And became a photo artist. Is that yes. your story? That's true. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit more about that. Were you taking pictures before you retired, or what happened? You, How did you, know, you the get into the it? The, the first, short version. Okay, the first picture. <laughs> <laughs> first one I ever took to pique my interest is I was in the Marine Corps, and I had a brownie uh, Hawkeye camera with 620 films. Is that right? And took a long exposure picture of the naval shipyard at night with the lights, Ooh. and I got hooked. So long from then I just I just played on you. it, yeah. But in um, and that um, was long, long ago. You were young, and when you were in the Marine Corps, right? Oh yeah, well I was 18 when I went in. Yeah, sure. That was that's uh, ancient history. Yeah. <laughs> but um, um, I had I had no intention of doing this. Uh, after I retired, I had uh, I was a state trooper six years and worked with the sheriff's department. 17 years and uh, I did photography crime scene photography oh you did oh yeah and using a 4x5 speed graphic 
And wow. after after I retired, uh, Marianne and I sold most everything we owned, and we bought a, a 36 foot motor coach uh, and a four wheel drive Bronco SUV for our dinghy. Oh my God! And we traveled uh, 49 states, including Alaska, for 15 years. I did not know that about yes. you. Uh -huh. Wow. And I did photography everywhere because it, it, it started to become a passion, you know, photographing the whole country, all, all the beauty of all the national parks oh, and, crazy and so beautiful. forth. And we used uh, Florida for our, um, our home base. Uh, Are you from here? No, 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 I'm from Northeast Ohio. Canton, so you Ohio, were a Youngstown. trooper up there and everything. Yeah, I was in Ohio, oh, okay. yeah, Ohio, yeah. And this was our home base from uh, November 1st through May 1st, and we'd take off. And we traveled again, yeah. You know. But uh, I had no intention of doing this, and 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 I started developing some pictures and making eight by twelve, eight by twelves, and whatnot, and showing them around different people around the RV resort. And people says, "You really ought to sh sell those pictures." And I thought, "Oh, who's going to want to buy this stuff?" You know. Uh -huh. And uh, so um, I was downtown one day, and uh, I don't know if you remember this, but across Fifth Avenue, right on Forty One. Across Fifth Avenue, a banner, <coughs> Art in the Park, Saturday from 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, what's this all about, you know? So I went down there on Saturday, and, and I saw what was going on. I said, wow, what a place. Look at all this activity, all this interest, all these artists, you know? And I thought, well, maybe I should, I should submit some of my photos and see if I can join. And that's, that's what started it all. Wow. Yeah. You know? And then that, that was... Uh, it was 25 years ago. Oh my god. This gosh. year. This is my 25th year. And that's through the Naples Art Association, which and, and, they and still the do. And the Naples Arts Crafters and the Marco Island Art League and the Bonita Art League. So you got involved in all of them. Oh yeah, Virginia, uh, Ohio. Uh, uh, so you went on the road to do the art shows after yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, but your yeah. first art show was at the at the Art in the Park. Yes, which uh -huh. is a smaller art show. Yeah, even though uh -huh. now they've been doing it for at least twenty-five years. Oh yeah, well, yeah, been doing it longer than that, sure. <laughs> um, but that gave you your got your feet wet. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then uh -huh. you were traveling anyway, so you decided just is that the story or? Yeah, well, we travel we travel by motorhome, so we would live here and go to Dahlonega, Georgia, go from Dahlonega, Georgia to Sumter, South Carolina. What was the Georgia word? Uh, Dahlonega. Wow, I never heard of that. Yeah, the wild, <laughs> it's an annual wildflower festival. It's a big deal up there. Oh, it's in the mountains. Oh, that sounds yeah, fun. Yeah. And then to Sumter, South Carolina, and we go up to Norfolk, and then we went to a place in West Virginia, and then we went to Ohio and settled in in my oh. sister-in-law's farm, and her, she had an airplane hangar. And that's where we had our base of operations. Oh, my gosh. And then we'd do art shows in Pittsburgh and different places in Pennsylvania. Too far. Yeah, uh-huh. And um, all over Ohio, uh, Indiana, um, Illinois, uh, clear out the Denver, uh, uh, Colorado, I mean, uh, Montana, Whitefish, Montana. Wow. And all That's points in between. That's pretty far. <laughs> 62 cities in 17 states. We did wow. art shows. Wow. Were you doing year, like a, an art show every week? Oh, weekend? yeah. Well, one, one time much? we did 48 shows in, 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 one, in year? one year. Yeah. That was crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now, Marianne? She was just support. She wasn't selling any. Oh artwork. no, no. She was. Act she actually uh, uh, ran the business. So she gave she me the business too. You know. <laughs> 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 but she actually ran the business. She did all. You know, during those days, we were using uh, slides, mm -hmm. and we had a slide projector, and she was just ruthless. You know, any little speck anywhere on anything. You know, to submit for art shows. You know. Okay. So she she was on top of that, and she looked at the shows and scheduled the shows and so forth, and. She really ran the business. I did the dummy work. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you got your nice compliment to each other. It sounds oh yes, like. yeah, yeah, exactly. Her degree is in commercial art from Ekman University. Okay, so yeah, she so has. She, she had that foundation, you know. Wow, that's so. awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, okay, so let's talk about since obviously you're a seasoned professional at this point, mm -hmm. 25 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. It is. But you don't travel as much now, right? No, we're sleeping in our own bed now. Yeah. You know, we, we, there's enough shows around here with uh, uh, six Naples Art Association shows, seven arts crafters, and Benita and Marco, and within this area. So we just we don't go to hotels anymore. It's 
Yeah. There's enough to do without that, you yeah. know, so. Hey, I had a guy on my show, um, Barry Howe. Do you know him? Oh, oh yeah, Barry. Oh, yeah. I've, I've he known doesn't him for even a long venture time. out of Marco Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah And I know. he makes enough money <laughs> yeah. from just doing the farmer's market and the art shows on Marco Island. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Oh, yeah. that blew my mind. Yeah. But I thought it was very inspirational. Yeah. Because yeah. some people don't want to travel all over the place, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But, like, my neighbor is Tom Millsap. I'm sure you know Tom. Oh, yeah, Tom, yeah. Yeah, he's and, good. Uh, yeah, he's he really is good. good. He's a painter. Oh, yeah. But he, um, he all summer, he's gone. You know, he's up he, he wherever travels. he goes, yeah. he yeah. travels. Yeah. And then he travels even around Florida and s the southern states yeah. in, the, mm -hmm. in the winter. So he's yeah. just always gone, probably how you used to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, used to do shows all over Florida, too, but not anymore. So, now, if somebody's just starting out, how, how, how would they choose an art show? Let's say they don't have any experience, okay? Because yeah. they might not get into a big art show right away, right? Right, yeah. Or they might. Should they even try? How expensive is it? I have too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have Let to kind of like go in reverse and think back. How do you know which show to go into? Well, you don't, you know, when you start out. Until you learn, learn the shows, learn the, learn the um, art show circuit, if you will. But I think uh, our Bible was uh, an, an art show magazine. And it was all over the United, for the whole United States, but we just stuck to Ohio at that time. Okay. And we did a whole lot of rinky-dink little arts and craft shows and, and uh, made a little bit of money, but it was so much fun, you know. My wall mural, my big photograph, was a 20 by 30. Oh my gosh, because do you, <laughs> you even sell anything that small anymore? <laughs> no. Because I remember the first time I, I saw your booth, and your pictures were humongous. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's that, what do you have an average size? So, uh, six foot by three feet That's for it. my panoramics. Four foot by three feet. Uh, two and a half by five. Thirty by forty. But that, that's about as small as I go. Now, what kind of camera do you shoot with? <laughs> Most of everything I have is uh, from four by five. Uh, it was a Linhoff. Then I went to a um, a Toyo field camera because the Linhoff. It was it was a real camera. That son of a gun was was heavy. <laughs> I, I photographed Bayfront on, on over Gordon Renner okay. River, and I parked at the uh, uh, restaurant down there. And I carried started carrying over the bridge. I go 50 feet, stop, pick up the other hand, stop, use this hand because it was so, so heavy. heavy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So then I got into a Toyo uh, field camera, uh, carbon fiber. It was the first one made, and that uh. weighed something like. 4.5 pounds, throw it in your back tap pack, you don't know you have it. Wow. So the heaviest thing you had was your tripod and a wow. couple of lenses. Yeah. So. So, and, and this What was the question? What kind of camera are you using? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also a Pentax two and, uh, two and a quarter. Okay. Is what I use. Uh, I have a Canon uh, uh, 6D right now that I've been playing with and, and making some photographs. So these are film cameras that you're using? Yeah, yeah, so until I got the 6D, shooting? yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Or are you shooting more with the 6D now? Yeah, I'm starting to shoot with the 6D, yeah. Do you um, have the t number two or the first one? Well, that would be the third one. No, I mean, I, the I, Canon 6D, they have a Mark II. Oh, they, they had a whole line of them. No, no, we had a um, an XSI or something like that that I did uh, uh, work for Marianne to shoot the, the crowds at the shows and mm -hmm. for promotional things like that. And, but and never just got for serious our audience, about that. Just for our audience, Marianne, I don't know if she's what she's doing now, I just realized, but she was the She was the director of the, uh, the festival director for the Naples Art Association. Yeah. And she was also the show chair for Naples Arts Crafters for about six years. Yeah, so she so, knows what she's doing. So yeah, you were oh, out there working for her. Oh, yeah. She probably didn't pay you either. <laughs> <laughs> if I groveled, I got, I got a little bit, you know. <laughs> but uh, but nine, you're 95, 98% shooting... of my work is on film. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Wow. Are you still out there shooting, or do you have so much work that you don't need to be out there anymore? Well, I, I, need, I need some more material, but uh, I have so much in my files, you know, that I look at things and I say, no. And I look at them a year later, mm, I don't know. And then I look at it and say, Hey, I think I'll do that. And that goes like crazy. See, it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. You can't figure, you know. That's so, awesome. I don't, yeah. I, and, and this is nothing to do with any questions I have. How do you stay organized when you have all those different... Seriously? Yeah, I mean, how, how do you know? Like, I mean, especially if it's film. I mean, yeah. for us, you know, we 
do you digitize it? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, it's scanned. It has to be scanned. And then, and then, then I print it. I do my own printing. But do you use Lightroom or something like that? No, to, it's, it's to an old, uh, it? the old, old uh, member of the Photoshop Seven. Uh huh. You have to have Photoshop that has plugins and drivers in order to be able to print. You can't. Your printer won't print unless you have, a, uh, like, say, Photoshop, which is, which is the engine for the car. Uh -huh. You have to have the engine to take the car okay. to send send the photograph to the printer so it can print. Right, right. So right. I know enough about Photoshop to make me dangerous. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so. But that doesn't organize your work for you, does it? No, it doesn't. No. How uh, do you organize know? Like you you ask me you how. Say, oh, I want to find that picture that I took. 12 years ago because it was a bestseller in Resurrection. Resurrect it. We really don't want to go there. <laughs> Do you know where it is? <laughs> it's been driving me crazy today. I've been trying to sort some files out because I'm doing a, doing a commission for somebody, uh, photographing their building and whatnot, <clears throat> and trying to move things uh, to my backup, to a hard drive uh, backup and whatnot. My stuff is scattered from okay. here to there. And, so you're normal. And, and you're if a I want to show somebody at the house, you know, to, 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 to click, 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 look here, look here. I can't find it. You know, sometimes I can't okay. find it. Okay. All right. Good. Just to, so just to, I, good I am to know I'm you're normal. Organized. But but I, <laughs> but I, but I know I know uh, uh, the things that I'm doing now that I'm printing for the show. I know where they all are. Yeah. You know. Well, that's how I am. It, that's with me. You know, I'm still a event photographer and portrait yes. photographer, uh -huh. and especially with portraits. Okay. So I did a portrait, and they order, and everything's fine. But if they come back a year later, I'm like, ah, crap. I know where the backup <laughs> is. It's upstairs, and you got to <laughs> climb through all this stuff. But it, I know it's on a hard drive right here. I just don't know which hard drive. I don't, you know. So it's, like, nice when they order right away. It's more of a pain in the butt when they order oh. later. And I now I charge when people, like, for headshots, I give them the digital Im yeah, images. Uh -huh. And if they lose it, they got to pay me to go upstairs in that room to go get it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Because uh -huh. it's like, just, I say, please back <coughs> this up. Please back this up. Yeah. And yeah. they don't. Yeah. And then they're yeah. like, well, I'll just ask you. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can ask me, but it'll cost sure, you. Sure, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, okay. So, choosing an art show, you used a magazine, which I think they still have. Yes, uh-huh. That same magazine, but I can't think of what it's called. Uh, what, uh, do you know? Sunshine Artist. Sunshine Artist? Yeah. Is that that's kind of like the Bible of of knowing where all the shows are. Okay. And and you can we're going back then. You know how'd you choose a show? It was all hit or miss. You didn't know what you were doing. You were just getting into shows. So you do know. you advise people just do local shows to start? Oh uh, yeah. Because uh -huh, it's too sure. expensive if you're going out of town, right? Oh yeah. First thing I'd advise them to do is is go to uh, go to the art shows. Just go. Oh, and look. Look at them. Oh. You know, talk to people. I was, uh, some people don't want to talk to you about getting real technical, you know. Yeah. But uh, Marianne always says I talk too much because I'm talking the whole time. I'm coming like teaching when I'm in my booth at the art shows, you know, yeah. talking about my work and teaching and so forth. But uh, you know, I talk to people, and she says I, I give away too much because <laughs> I've said a lot of things about some of my work that people run off and do the same thing. Uh. <laughs> so. Uh, but I tell people that when they're starting out to, to go to the show, look and see what people's doing. See what's working for that area. Because what works here in Florida doesn't work for, for uh, Montana. Oh, my gosh, what you a know, good point. I can't, I can't take, for example, the Naples Pier at Sunset to uh, Montana. Yeah, nobody's going to care. <laughs> no, nobody's going to care. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hit and miss, you know, until you get to learn. And then after a while, you get to read the... Uh, you start looking for... Uh, prestigious shows uh, where they this is the 10th annual 15th annual oh. and you look at the prize money oh not that not that I ever consider prize money I've, I've won some prize money but I look at the prize money because that tells me how serious that organization is about that show oh that's you know, like good. if it's a rotary, rotary show if it's a municipal uh, uh, sponsored show um, if it's a, a, a commercial uh, outfit you know that this doing shows around the country and you look at those kinds of things that tells you whether or not you want to be in that show because that's where the money is really that is and such you look great. at the crowds i never heard that advice that's great you do advice. the crowd count which is usually a big lie oh like they <laughs> say wanna, oh, a thousand yeah, people yeah, came had, through when oh, yeah, about a, you, yeah, what do you uh -huh. think half of what they say 
Oh, oh it, it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't even you don't even pay attention to it. You just know it, 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 they're just, they're all overinflated. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I like that about the prize money. I never thought of that. Yeah. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so how how do you choose, you know, talking about advice to our audience, mm -hmm. how do you choose which pieces to be juried? Okay, so most of these shows, or all of these shows probably, you have to jury in. So you have to send them, either digitally or physically, three or four pieces. Yes, uh-huh. That yeah. the judges are going to look for and say, okay, I'm going to let you in, or you're not good enough. I'm not. It's not even an issue of being good enough, though, is it? Well, you know, you know, your bigger shows that have uh, strict jury standards, yeah, sure, yeah, you better know what you're doing. I mean, your images better be. But good. I mean, you could have good images and still not get in. Oh, absolutely. Oh, sure. That's I, what I've I been, meant by that. I've been turned on a lot of times. Heck yeah. So, how do you choose the pieces to be juried? People, people like the familiar. Okay. Okay. Now, w when I was doing shows around Ohio and Pennsylvania and so forth, I had my complimentary. Pieces, uh, complimentary pieces of mail pouch, tobacco, barns, <laughs> waterfalls, uh, gardens, um, things along that nature. I didn't, I didn't have have a lot of seascapes. Right, because you know. in Ohio there's no, no sea. No, no, uh huh? In Montana, I had uh, I had a lot of images from all my travels. I did uh, Glacier National Park, a lot of Yellowstone things, uh, wildlife, uh, uh, bears, you know, grizzly bears. Okay. And, and uh, moose and muskox, and when we were last, went all the way to Alaska, and shot some muskox. Wow. And uh, I don't know what a muskox is. It, it's kind of like, it looks like a prehistoric buffalo with a lot of hair. Really? <laughs> yeah, That's the so horns cool. are a little bit different. They stick up, but they're they're bigger than a buffalo, and they look like they're wearing a fur coat. Okay, I think I know the what ground. they are. I didn't think I'd ever see one of those. We went all the way up. We drove to Prudhoe Bay, wow. which is 550 miles of nothing but nothing to get there. Yeah. And that was in your RV? No, no, no. We would oh, use the Bronco for that. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. When we were in Alaska, we would park the, the uh, motor home, and we'd go out in our Bronco, like the spokes of a wheel, put the motor home here, and go out. We went as many as six days at a time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we put in food, survival gear, shotgun, and just go hiking, exploring, you know, taking pictures. and yeah. Oh, uh -huh. fun. Ran what an exciting 16. life. Oh, yeah, yeah. We ran the 16 grizz grizzly bears and three black bears and never, ever threatened by man or beast. That's awesome. Yeah, during that whole time. Where were we? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, we were talking about, it's the, okay because I like it. The interest of, of, of how do you know what to show. Yeah, you know? but I like that. I never heard that advice either. So far I've gotten two pieces of advice that I've never heard <laughs> yeah, from you. Okay. But that's, so something that local people like the familiar. People Okay, and the judges are the same way. Exactly. Because yeah. they're probably local judges. No, no. no. Mary, when Marianne uh, had judges, she had judges uh, which she would run through um, juried art services, and they were around the country. But they still said independent judges who know who who doesn't know anybody here. Okay. You, and they don't know who's who's doing the work, either painting or photography, or whatever, because your name is not on it. You're not allowed to have your name on but anything. But how do they know? You know, in Florida, the Naples Pier is gonna. Would that? I, I give would. Them I would guess they have a sense of location. Okay. You know. But they okay. were all independent. And they would. They would have a scoring system, from one to say one to twenty-five, and they would score you. Okay. And say, like in photography, for example, say there's there's thirty or forty photographers applying for that show. Mm -hmm. Well, they would score the points. They would take the average of all the judges, and start all the way down. They take the top. Say they have. Say they have five spots. They, one, two, three, four, five. Then they have a couple on standby in case somebody doesn't show up. Uh, she's had people from the Smithsonian Institute uh, on, on the juries, judging, okay. judging wow. the work. Yeah. They're totally independent. They don't know anybody. But there's also local judges uh, on different shows, uh, different sponsors. They have their own way of doing it. Okay. But that's how she did it. All right. So, okay. So, um, all right. What about, like, so now you've decided, I mean, okay, so how do you, just, okay, so you say I'm going to take, I'm in Florida. Let's just use that because that's easy for me. <laughs> I'm going to do the Naples Pier. You want a cohesiveness to your pictures, right? Yeah, you want, you, them, to you want them to kind of uh, not be exactly the same, but you want to um, 
I always submit, uh, for example, if I have uh, some vertical things, I want to do. I want to do verticals. I'll do all verticals, uh -huh. uh, or I'll do all uh, horizontals. Okay. Uh, uh, or I'll do uh, square format, for example, like four foot by three foot. So they look like they go together. So they all look of. like they go together. Uh, they're local, and they all complement each other. You know, you don't want a covered bridge right next to the Naples. Uh, Pier, for example, you know. Right. So you want to attract, and, and, and it has to, it has to grab you. It has to grab the judges. So you have high to get their impact attention. pictures. Yes, because they they only they only look at your work maybe three seconds. You know, yeah. I don't know if you do that, know that, because they have thousands of photographs to look at on the screen, and they'll go, yes, no, maybe. It was flash on the screen, yes, no, maybe, flash on the screen, and that's how you're judged. Yeah. So you better you better get their attention right away. Okay. How? You so high them. impact. Yes. So not local. too bright, not oh, too not bright too because bright. you don't they don't want the light in their eyes blinding them to go like that. Ah. Have a certain image, uh, three images that are mediocre in terms of exposure or light, mm -hmm. and, and and a bright sun sunshine hitting you in the face. You know, like that. They don't like that. So ah, that's interesting too. So you have to be careful of uh, what you submit. You know. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So local or the whatever something that will appeal to the local mm -hmm. area yeah. which makes sense to a selling because you're there to sell so you want to make sure that your stuff is yeah. going to sell uh -huh. a cohesive look uh -huh. and then uh not too bright <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. anything else to get your work accepted oh well, high impact you said that yeah. oh, that's yeah. a big yeah. that's a big thing <laughs> high impact, yeah. and i've seen i've seen people from from other states uh, there's one particular fellow that did uh, Western kinds of things with 8x10 film. His work was dynamite. I mean, it just jumped off the walls of the art show. But he said, I'm never coming back to Florida. He said, nobody's buying anything here. You no, know. oh, kidding. They weren't really interested in, in that. Western and stuff and down and here. Except individual, go. maybe sell a piece or two. We aren't going to sell a lot. So. That's interesting. Although I was really surprised because um, a guy that we mutually know, I'm sure, I don't know if you know him or not, but he was selling... Um, Italy landscapes. At yeah. And he was doing very well here. I w I, that surprised the heck out of me. But I don't know if he's still doing it or not. I, don't, I haven't lost it. Yeah, there's, se there's several that do that, and there's some that are really, really, really good. I guess everybody loves Italy. I went to Italy yeah. for the first time last year, and now, oh, yeah? I, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see why everybody likes it. <laughs> Marianne told me that it was trying to talk me to go in Italy and, and get some of the images. And, and, and I go to the art shows and, and see Italy. And this guy's got that scene, this guy's got that scene, this guy, and they're all the same. They are the same they're, because they're, I they are collectors. They're not artists creating something on their own. Uh, they're collecting certain places that everybody goes to, you know. Well, I, familiar, I thought you know? the whole of Tuscany looked like all these pictures, and then I, I hired a photographer to take me. I mean, I don't know where to go, so of course I would hire yeah. a tour. That's what people do with us. They, they want to come to the Everglades, they come to understand photography, yeah, we'll yeah. take them to the good yeah. places. Uh -huh. Um, but he took us to this, this was in Gladiator, this, you know, this was mm -hmm. in the movie Gladiator, this, so I got the oh, same yeah. pictures oh, yeah, yeah. everybody else oh, yeah, did. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah but I've been point. to Italy, though, so, so, but I didn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, It wasn't a photo trip? No, no. I'll tell you a little story. Okay. <laughs> four of us, four of us Marines went to, uh, the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa and Florence and, and the church and everything. We hit a couple of bars, we got drunk. And it's getting close, to the, the, the uh, sk uh, skid's gonna go back to the ship, the main ship. And if we're late, we're in trouble. Yeah. We couldn't find anybody to take us back, so we stole a horse and buggy. <gasps> <laughs> and we ran it down to the <laughs> beach. <laughs> we parked at oh a block from the beach and got out and ran on the boat just in time before it pulled out and off we went. Oh but don't my tell gosh! Anybody. Don't, don't tell me. anybody. You don't just put it on the, <laughs> the internet. <laughs> the statute of limitation is long past. Probably passed. by now. Yeah, <laughs> you can't be court-martialed anymore. No, 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 no. Uh, can they take away your pension though? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh well, I don't know why I threw that in there. <laughs> I like it was a good story. No, but that shows that you have a, a very conscientious mind that you still feel guilty <laughs> after all these years. Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> So now, do you? What do you do to promote your shows? Okay, now you're local. It's probably not as hard to, or maybe it's harder to promote them. I don't know. Maybe because people are like, oh, I've already seen Jack's work. Maybe it's harder. I don't know. 
But how would you, like if you were going to Michigan or Ohio or whatever, how do you, how do you promote? Yeah, see when you're, when you're starting out in your first years, <clears throat> you, know, you know that you should promote yourself, you know that you should send out flyers, you should send out post, postcards, they had written postcards and stamps, you know. And, but you don't know anybody, you don't know who to send them to, you yeah. know. And even though you do a city maybe two or three times, the only list you have are the people who bought from you. So you can, and that has worked. I've sold to people whom I sent postcards to that bought because I had their, their name and address, you know. I can't say that I really got into that real big like a lot of people do. And I may have hurt myself in a way by not doing that, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But here, I don't, I really don't, I can't say that I promote myself that well here because I'm, I'm local and, and people know me and I have repeat customers, you know. I have one collector down in Port of the Islands has 21 of my pieces. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes, yes. It, it Where shocked me. Where did he, she put them? <laughs> I walked into the house. Do they have like a huge house? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. They have a very Port large house. Port of the Islands house. has yeah. big houses. We, we like delivered that? one to the uh, to their house. I walked in the front door, and right away I started seeing my work on the walls. And I'm thinking, wow, all this all this work. She was, she took us to the house, to the hallways, to the bedrooms, to the to their, all over the house. Okay, and I'm thinking I should know their name. I should know their firstborn. You know, I should know everything about those people. But what happened was I would sell to the wife. Sometime I'd sell the husband, my wife would sell the wife, she'd sell the husband. Uh. And over all these years, you know, and you see familiar faces and you look at people and say, oh, I've seen them many times at the show, but there are a lot of people come to the show and don't buy anything. Yeah. So I see a whole sea of faces that I know, but I can't remember everything people bought from me or didn't buy from me. How could you possibly remember? So I remember? didn't know, I really didn't know those people. And, and I, internally I was very embarrassed, you know, I was yeah. supposed to see that much on the wall. but. Uh, uh, no, I haven't really promoted myself that much because people pretty pretty much know me. I, I do the local shows, and they see me all all year, uh, not all year, from October through April. So, yeah. And I keep putting new pieces, new pieces on the walls. So you know? it makes it worthwhile for yeah, them to well, come, come and back and so yeah. And stop by your booth. Yeah, that's that's my only promotion, just being there. Exposure. Do you do you try to get email addresses from people when they come in? You don't even. No, Marion keeps telling me to keep a list, and I have a email sheet. <laughs> I come home from the show. You got two emails here. What do you? <laughs> I keep forgetting, you know. <laughs> but you know, that's something that I know. Like for me, certain things. I've been in business for now for 18 years in this area. Really? Yeah, and. Uh, that's probably where I saw you down there taking pictures of the, maybe. the art association. <laughs> uh, well, I started. I started working for the art association in 2009. Uh -huh. That was the year I went broke. And I honestly thought, and I've told, I'm sure my audience has heard this story a thousand times, but I thought event photography was beneath me mm -hmm. because I was so highly trained as a portrait photographer, yeah, but uh -huh. I was desperate for money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, do you remember Robin DiMattia? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Wonder she's wonderful the one. lady, yeah. So another photographer had, you know, got injured basically, and she referred me. Uh -huh. And so Robin's like, well, how much do you charge? I'm like, Three ninety-five an hour. She goes, "I'll give you 50 <laughs> <laughs> We did negotiate a little higher rate. Yeah, but she guaranteed me all nine of the jobs that uh -huh. year and yeah. whatever. And and Robin did a lot of training for me, you know, because yeah. I showed up for the first job and she's like, "Where's your pad of paper, you know, to take the names?" And I'm mm -hmm. like, "I don't. I didn't know I had to have that, you know." So yeah. she helped me a lot. I was lucky because she was very. She, she was she's a the good consummate professional. Yeah, Absolutely. and she really. I got lucky because I learned with my first job a lot of things that event photographers have to do. And now mm -hmm. I have a huge event photography business. Oh, yeah, there are sure. four oh, yeah, of us sure. in the business, and we do all oh, kinds of work. Oh, that's, that's great. Congratulations. So, yeah, four yeah. people. Wow. Yeah, well, life, life changes. Yes, yeah. And photography yeah. changes. Yes, yeah. And mm -hmm. in fact, that's something that I'm sure you know because you've been doing this for a long time. One of the things that <coughs> shocked me when I first well, shock isn't the right word, but when I first started working at the Naples Art Association, there were very few photographers involved. And now it's mostly photographers. Yeah. So you that remember was Carl Stowe from no, Marco Island? No. He was the only photographer in, 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 in 1993 when I joined, and I was the second photographer. Wow. And he, he, he retired when he was 85 years old. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you got a ways to go. And now, now, <laughs> now everybody with a camera is a photographer. Everybody, everybody, <laughs> you know. 
Yeah. Yep, yep. That's why it's 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 actually you know, very gratifying to me as an instructor when people start really understanding what they're doing. Yeah. It's frustrating mm -hmm. to see all these people out shooting in some automatic mode and you yeah, know. yeah, snap, snap, snap. Yeah. You know, that's and, mm -hmm. but they get good at Photoshop is what they get good at because they have to fix their pictures. <laughs> <laughs> garbage in is garbage out. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you'd be surprised. Sometimes you get lucky, yeah, I, yeah, I know. All right, so let's say so our our uh, test subject has gotten in, they've gotten past the jury, they've gotten into the art show, they already bought their booth. How would you find information on how to put a booth together? Do you just search on the internet or no, does you the look. Art Association you, you go to help the art, you? You go to the art shows, you look, you look at, uh, you, you look, you look and learn, you, you ask questions, you know. Okay. You look at a, a something uh, a sturdy and um, we have one of the, the best booths in the industry in terms of, of quality and sturdiness because you know, when, when those storms hit, you, know, you have an easy up. They're, they're easy downs, too. You know, oh. you work and blow away and, and whatnot. But asking questions, looking and, and comparing. And so, and we, so we, your we, advice is to <coughs> spend a little more money on the tent because of that. Yeah, the tent. Because I know and here the, uh, we get rained out of those art shows. I feel so Oh yeah. Sad for the yeah. people who travel so far to come to an oh, art yeah. show and then it rains like yeah. crazy oh, for two days. Oh, that happens to all of us. Sure. Yeah, you tra you travel and then spend a thousand dollars. You know, you get your hotel, you get your space, you get set up and everything. It rains for two days. Nobody Nobody's comes to the show. Come. Yeah. You still have the bills to pay. But you know. so you have you say suggest a sturdy tent. Is there anything else about the booth itself that that's advice that you have? <laughs> well, you you need. Uh, uh, well, for two-dimensional work, that, that's my area, so I, I, I'll talk about that. You need sturdy walls, and the walls have to be an integral part of your booth. Your walls support your booth, your booth supports your walls. And you have to have uh, very heavy weights. They recommend 25 pounds per leg. I have 60 pounds per leg, and I have an extra four 25-pound bags. Now, for how the big storms, do you but, set uh, that stuff up by yourself, or do they have helpers at the art shows? Or no, Marianne and I used to do that by, by ourselves. But but uh, the reason I retired because I had a lot of injuries with surgery, and uh, I re I retired at the age of forty five. So uh, I used to do a lot of my own. You work retired putting, from being a from, from police work. Police yeah. work, okay. And used to do it myself, but it, over the years it kind of ground me down, and I had. I had back surgery a few years ago. I've got some steel rods and screws and all oh that boy. stuff. So I have to have help because uh, it's a very heavy, heavy setup. It's, no kidding. It's a lot. It's a lot yeah. of weight. I think it's 2,400 pounds altogether. Everything that I have with the tent and the poles and the work and the, and the weights and everything that goes with it. What you see set up there is 2,400 pounds. So how do Believe you? It or not. Let me ask you first. So, how do you get it there? Do you have a big van or yeah, something? Yeah, I have a cargo van. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So you get it there, and do they have help? Most of the shows that you can hire? No, no, no. I have you to have, hire my own. I have a, I have a guy that helps me out. I'll hire him to do all the heavy work. Okay. And I handle the artwork. He handles the booth. Oh, putting it up. Okay. Yeah, he's a very very strong for a strong guy. He's very but strong for a strong guy. <laughs> 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 I'm teasing you. <laughs> yeah. So and and he's very intuitive. And so how do I don't you find even somebody have to pay like attention. that? As a matter of fact, Marianne hired him uh, to uh, 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 to work the ground crew for the Naples Art Association uh -huh. for the national shows, and uh -huh. she always gets people from uh, the homeless shelters to give them jobs mm -hmm. uh, so they can earn money. Yeah. And and this one particular guy seemed to be a natural-born leader, and she chose him to take care of the ground crew. Okay. And everybody was all mic'd up and. <laughs> Every once in a while, Marianne would come across and somebody would give her some smart talk, and he'd say, Hey, I'm going to be talking to you about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for, uh, to, to, uh, to do that, you have to have, uh, you have to have help. Most people don't have help. They set up their own. But mo okay. most of the people local here are, are doing their easy ups and whatnot. Uh, okay, wow. You have very you, serious so, professionals, and you have all kinds of people learning in different stages of learning. Yeah. And, and, and getting their work to a higher and higher quality every year, you know, because they're getting good at what they do. So if, if, like, say I wanted to do it again, which I don't, and I don't want to set that thing up by myself, though, mm -hmm. it, and I'm doing a show in Michigan, 
how would I do? I mean, the bigger shows, do they have people that they recommend? Yeah, to yeah, kind of think what they do. They have a, but a, the small an organization. Shows don't. Uh, no, uh, well, it, it, it isn't for the shows. They're oh, independent oh. businesses. Oh, oh, And I okay. think I think um, I can't think of the name of the organization here. Tents for sale or tents for tents or whatever it is, oh. and they'll come in and set up your booth, <coughs> set up your tent. And if you want walls, they'll give you walls. Okay. And, of course, you have your sides and everything in case it rains. They have the weights. And all you do is bring your artwork in, you set it up. At the end of the show, you take your artwork out. So you got to make sure you're going to make enough money to pay for that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have any clue on how much that costs? Yeah, it varies. Uh, if you just get a, get a booth uh, and no walls, it's, I, I don't know the prices. No. I, think, I don't think you can go much more than like $350 for everything, I think. I was just talking to somebody about it a couple months ago. If memory serves me right, you can spend like $150, or if you want this, you get $200. If you want that, it's $300. But that might be a viable option for, like, our audience, you know, a lot of them are like you, only they didn't retire at 45, but they retire and they, you know, they want a new career. Yes, right. And yeah. they love mm -hmm. photography, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's very yeah. gratifying to sell yeah. your artwork, isn't sure. it? Oh, it sure, it sure is, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like, people like my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the first time I sold some things, I thought, wow, I, hey, I really can sell something, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and then you get the bug, you know? Yeah. And then, and then after a while, even, even at my age, as long as I've been doing it, it's still a passion, you know? And when I lose that passion, I'll quit. But as long as I have it and, and my body's able to move, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll do it. All right. So... Now I've got the stuff hanging on the wall. What kind of information do you include with each piece piece that you sell? So you've got this beautiful picture and this beautiful picture. Do you have like a little card next to them? No, the or? only information I have is the size and the price and the title. Okay. Okay. So I watch body language when I'm at the art shows, oh. and I, um, I and I'll talk. To, I greet everybody. Everybody comes in. I greet them. You know. And uh, and if uh, and they're moving around, they're looking and whatnot. And if somebody pauses or has to take a look at something, I'll start talking about that particular piece. Okay. How I did it, where it was, you know, what inspired me, and so forth, to get them interested in it. And you can tell when somebody walks up to a piece, and there's that magnetism, you know, that they can't take their eyes off it. You know, there's a connection, you know. Okay. Sometimes they don't buy right then and there. They have to bring their spouse, or they got to walk around a couple of times and talk to himself, self in it because my pieces start at $450 and go to $1,500. Mm -hmm. So everybody doesn't have that in their pocket, you know. Right, right. So and you do take credit cards and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, take credit cards. So oh, that, that's a must because yeah. you have so many spontaneous buyers that had no intention of buying anything. You have to take credit cards. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's easy nowadays yeah. with Square and all that. Yeah. yeah. But there's really no information about the pieces. I, I give people the information. So you just talk to them. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. now, do you have stories about your work, or yeah. do you mostly just talk about where you took it? No, if they're really interested in it, then I'll go on the story with it uh, and, t and talk about uh, um, where it was and how I created it and so forth. You, you don't go out there and, 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 and snap uh, a photograph, or you don't say, Today I'm going to go out there and, and make one great, tremendous image, you know. You have to go to the same place time and time again, summer, winter, spring, fall, morning, noon, night. I even have things I did at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. Ah. Then I'm out there doing things, you know. But you study a location and you keep photographing it and you keep studying the light. And I have two pieces that took me three years before I actually got them. Wow. What, I, what I knew was there that I could never grasp before. And um, You mean you knew you had something in mind, but you never saw it, or you never got the picture? <clears throat> I knew it was there, but I couldn't capture it. One, one for example, was, the, uh, was in the Everglades. It was a tree formation with water in the foreground. And it was a very interesting tree formation. But the problem with it was there were a lot of trees in the background. And you really couldn't isolate it, okay, you know? Yeah. So one night I'm listening to the weather forecast, and they says heavy fog in the morning. Oh. And I knew exactly where the sun come up on oh. standing in front of that particular piece. So I got up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'd drive down the Everglades. <laughs> I'd go hike. <laughs> well, I knew the trail, you know, and I, and I was using a, a 2 million candle power spotlight because I can light it up so if I see something, I can, you know, anything dangerous or something, I can... Would they be I'll, scared I'll off there. by the yeah. light? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Do you use a walking stick, too? They're more afraid of too? us than we are of them. Walking stick, too, yeah. out there? Uh, well, tripod. 
Oh, you that's know. your walking stick? Yeah, yeah kind yeah, of. Yeah, because I know I hike in the Everglades. I fall in a lot of holes. <laughs> 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 and I twist my ankles a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you got to know where you're going, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's dangerous out there, yeah. especially at, in, when it's dark. Mm -hmm. So you got it with the fog? Well, the, the fog uh, uh, hit everything else in the background. It isolated those trees in oh, that spot. Man. The sun come through and a splash, rays of sun just splashing out of the Everglades. And I got it. I nailed it. Wow. And that took three years. Wow, that's such a great mm -hmm. story. Yeah. Now, do you write these stories down so you remember them when you have, okay, this is the story for this piece, this is the story for this piece, or do you just kind of remember No, everything? sometimes I do. When On my website, I'll have like little little stories on there. But <laughs> I did a Naples Pier at 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Under a full moon. Oh. Okay, it's a 12-minute exposure. Wow. 12-minute exposure. I did 8, 10, 12, and 15-minute exposures on it, okay? And I used my 4x5. I'm u using... Uh, uh, Fuji Provia 100 F, F film, 4x5. <clears throat> and film goes into reciprocity failure after three seconds, you know, as you know. So your colors are constantly shifting and changing during that exposure. You don't know what color you're going to get at the end of it, say. Okay. And also during that time, the sky is moving, the clouds, the water is moving, everything. Where was the moon? Uh, it was over my right shoulder. I was going to say it wasn't in the picture or it would have been moving. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Or it looked like it's moving. It was over my right shoulder. So I wrote a detailed description of it. Now, uh, at the end of this season, there were no less than five other people that went and tried to do that because I had a detailed description uh, on my website and I even had a little plaque under the photograph on the wall, you know, and I go through the art shows and one particular guy really, really come close. And I walked into his booth, it was just before the art show, and he says, nice, huh? I'm looking at it, I said, do you know the difference between a professional and, a, and an amateur? He said, what's that? I said, a professional gets a tremendous amount of self-satisfaction out of creating something, something beautiful. I said, amateur copies. And I walked out, that's all I said. <laughs> But, you know, as far as writing a description, I have to be careful of that now because yeah. I, I have some other things that I'm working on, and they're on my website <clears throat> under Painting with Light. I did some very unusual creative things that nobody's done around here. And so I, t people ask me, how did I do it? And I just smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know so. um, John Brady. I'm sure you know John. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He has yeah. a picture of the Naples Pier with the moon huge right at the yeah, end of the pier. Yeah, uh -huh. And someone put it, I, 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 I don't know if it was on his website and somebody took it or whatever, but they put it on Facebook without any photo credit. Is that right? And that's why I always tell people, if you put it on the internet, put your name on it. Yeah, because do a uh, yeah. I, You know, they probably didn't do it intentionally to steal his picture, but uh -huh. it kind of went a little viral. And, yeah, sure, and then yeah. same thing. Everybody was like, who wants to go out and get this <laughs> shot? You know, yeah, I'm going to do yeah. this, try to copy it which I, I've never seen a good copy of that picture. It was amazing. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. You know uh, which picture yeah, I'm talking yeah, about do. then, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so... In terms of description, that's, what, that's where we were with that, yeah. So what about... Um, okay, so you display your work. Is there any, any tips to that, just in the booth at all? Is it like, do you just cram everything in every single space? No, or? that's, that's <clears throat> the one thing you don't want to do. I remember a long time ago doing shows... Uh, one of the promoters says that, that uh, less is more. And I filled every square foot of that booth with this size and that size and that size. <coughs> Excuse me. It was sensory overload, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. And my thinking is, well, if, if people don't see it, they can't buy it. So I'm going to put everything in there, you know? Exactly. So now my display is very well laid out. That it's not crowded. You have room to pause on each individual image. And when you stand back and look at my presentation, it, it's very, the whole it's very pleasing. Booth yeah. looks nice. Uh -huh. And do you use frames or do you use? How do you? I use, use some frames. I'm, I'm doing mostly um, uh, stretching, as you call it, uh, on canvas. Most of my work is on canvas now. The canvas wrap around. Yeah, I okay. got away from paper because when you, when you're doing the art shows, when, when I was doing strictly paper, and and uh, mat board and frames and glass, you do the outdoor shows, and a shadow comes across, splits the photograph. 
moisture collection inside of it, and nobody's oh. going to buy that. You know, it's, it's kind of yeah. like ruined, you know. Yeah. And um, it was difficult. Then you get stuff inside, you know, a little little dust spot, then you got to take it all apart and do it again. And such a hassle. Canvas and then is when, so uh, sturdy. Canvas oh, oh, yes. is such oh, yeah, a sure. rugged. Yeah. You know, I, I have, not that they weren't expensive pictures or anything, but I have a... Uh, I've just got a lot of canvases outside of my house, on the on the outside of my house, and I'm about to put more on the fences. So I have a little art gallery in my fences. Oh, is fences. that right? Yeah. And do you cut but them real well? You I have some pictures that were in my old place uh -huh. that I brought with me when I moved into my house 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And they're paintings, you know, that I bought at, you know, I don't know, I can't think, like Target or something. Uh -huh. And uh, You're one of those, huh? Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, they've been out there for 10 years, yeah. outside. There's no covering. They're, they're in uh -huh. the elements for 10 years, and it's they incredible. still look fabulous. Are they, are they on canvas, you say? They're canvas, yeah. Yeah, they must have been coated very well. Yeah, you have yeah. to coat them very well. So there's a, there's a, uh, a varnish for that, non-yellowing yeah. varnish, yeah. So anyway, the canvas is, and we always tell people when we're selling pictures, you know, oh, I'm going to put this in my bathroom. Well, you need a canvas. You don't want paper in your bathroom. Yeah. Because like yeah. you said, the moisture will get in there, and yeah. it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be toast. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so. I'm sure people ask you about your Gickleys. Gickley's. <laughs> 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 you caught me off guard for a minute. I'm like, Gickley, what's that? And she's like, okay. Is this now, one of them Gickley's? <laughs> now, do you print your own work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so what kind of printer do you have? Is a it Canon uh, um, 8100 and 8400. And that'll print? They're 44 inches. <clears throat> so the widest I can go, let's say I have a panoramic, the height, the largest I can do is 36 inches. Okay. Although it's 44 inches, but you need that inch and a half wrap around, and then you need an extra wrap around. You need the white, so much two inches of white. So you lay your canvas down, face down. You put your frame, your stretcher board on top of it that you construct, you know, and then you have to use the tool. And I do it all by hand. You do uh, even the stretching. You do. Yeah, yeah, I do my own stretching. Yeah. Now I hear a lot of artists do that, and that is because it's way less money when you do it yourself. Is that why? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's way less oh, money sure. and people, you have more yeah, quality people, yeah. control, oh, sure. of course. Yeah, yeah. You have quality control and uh, your, your uh, profit margin is much greater because you're not spending three, four hundred dollars to somebody to do it for you or you can do it for less. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but you need a lot of space for that then, oh, right? Well, I have, I have a, a table that's uh, 50 inches wide by 90 inches long. Wow. In my studio. <clears throat> it's carpeted, but I also have a, like a membrane on top of it. It's a cutting board. I have a million cuts in that thing when I trim everything with my cutting knights. Now, is this in your home? In my home, yeah. Because you don't have a studio studio where you sell your or no, gallery, right? No, no, every, right? everything's done in my right. home, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to go or rent a studio. We did have a studio for, for like three years. Did you? Three and a half years. No. Not overhead. It wasn't worth it, you yeah. know. You're married to it, you know. And then you got to be there all the time. Exactly, uh-huh. And off season, you got you have a month where not a single soul walks through the door. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that off happens. season. Well, it's, it's not as bad now as it. You, well, you've been here a long time too, yeah. right? Yeah. So you know. So we got rid of that. I yeah. got here. I've been here 25. When did you get here? I've been here 25 89. years. Okay, I got here 93. So you've been here longer. Mm -hmm. So gosh, just, just a few years, yeah. Man, did the everything closed up, right? See you oh, in oh, October. Yeah. See you in October. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then, we'll, then, we'll, then we, when we were in Alaska, we would stop at the restaurant. It says closed uh, uh, for the winter going to Florida. <laughs> that makes sense. It works, it works both ways, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like Tom Millsap, who I was talking. He goes north for the art shows in the yeah. summer. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. here we don't have any art shows in the summer. Right, yeah. Yeah, so we did, but not anymore. Did we? Yeah. I didn't even know. No, I said we did, but oh, not anymore. Oh, you yeah, did. We, we you were on the we road. We traveled all over the place. What yeah. about lighting in the booth? How do you light your pieces? <coughs> I do have lights. I'm, I'm one of the very few people that have lighting. Most of the people who have lighting are jewelers. Oh, yeah, because uh, they but need it. Two di yeah, they, they need it. But two-dimensional, uh, very few. But I have two um, marine batteries. Okay. And I have uh, I use the LED lights. I have um, ten lights. They, they hardly pull any power at all. Are they the know? kind that go, like, on the top of your roof? It, it's on a... Um, or not reef, yeah, it's ceiling. Yeah, it's on a bar. There's three lights to a bar, and they're plug-in, but I put an extra two on. You can buy the lights separately and hook them onto the bar. And then you can position them so that they 
Yeah, and across the top of my booth, uh, I used I used bars to stabilize the booth, and oh. so I put those on top of the bars. Oh, okay. And then, then after I hook it all up, I turn the lights on in the morning, and then I adjust them accordingly to my pieces. And then when the show starts, then I go back and. And they don't it up give you any battery. hot spots on the picture or anything like that. No, it's no, a they're, good, no, they're floods. It's a broad yeah, they're floods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. It, it works good out lighting nice. is so important. You, oh, you're telling me, especially you got a rainy day or a cloudy day or whatnot. I've gone to, gone to shows where it's very overclass, cast crowdy and crowded, and my wife will be in the booth, and I'll go get a coffee or something, and I'll walk down the street, and I see this 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 glow. You know, it's it's me. Yeah, <laughs> and it draws people. <laughs> yeah, I saw this light and I come down here and yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about those booths that have the big like light box on top of them? Do you know what I'm talking about? The light box? Not a light box, but like a they they're kind of they look like a little bit of a domeish and then there's a lot of light. I don't see them too often. Mm, I, I don't know. You don't even know what I'm talking about. So you don't so. see them too often either. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can't, I can't think of what you're talking about. So, but you re you recommend good lighting. Yeah, I do. It's a, it's a hassle, you know. It's extra work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's extra expense. It's extra work. It's yeah. But, but you're I, there. It's a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of artists of every of every sort keep forgetting. Yeah. Well, you're in a business. Yeah. And you hear somebody say, "Well, this isn't a business." Well, it is a business. You know. It's a business. You need to run it like a business. Yeah. Okay, so you already told me how you engage a potential customer. You kind of, you greet them, but it, unless they show interest, you don't really, yeah, you right, let them, right. you I let let them, them browse. I don't, You're I not going to attack them. No, I've seen people, people that, that follow them around, you know, and just talk, 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 and that puts people off, yeah, you know. Yeah. And they, don't want, they don't want to be crowded. I know, I don't, I don't want it when I go someplace. No, you know, I know. Somebody follow me and yeah, to the yeah, to the, you know. Yeah, yeah. What about, is there anything that you should not do while you're at a show? Oh, yeah. Like, what do you see? Because you've done so many. What do you see, like, other people doing that you're like, I oh, see, my gosh, I see what's wrong with these people? Sitting in their booth, in the back of the booth, they're, they're wearing sunglasses. Arms folded. And they're, and they're like that. Just looking All day grouchy. long, they're like that, you know? Yeah. Like you, I'd be afraid to go in that booth. Yeah, and people, people, I, I look at body language and I see people hesitate, you know, and they'll look and and they'll get out of there because they're they're just they're not engaging, you know. Uh, you have you have to engage. You can't. Uh, uh, you have to be be dressed well enough. You don't have to dress up, but you have to be right. clean. You have to be clean shaven. I see people ragged clothes and and kind of frumpy looking and. Um, you, you don't want to do that, you know. You want to look professional, like you—you yeah. you mean business, you know? Yeah. Well, your collectors are yeah. not artists, probably. So, because I have heard that. Well, I'm an artist, you know. Well, I well, want yeah, to sure. dress yeah. like, yeah, yeah. But your collectors are not artists, so you, they have to be able to relate to you at some level. Exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. But that's what you don't want to do. You know, you don't want to just sit there and stare at people, <laughs> especially wear sunglasses. Yeah. You know? So they can't make eye contact. <laughs> no, you can't make eye contact. You got to make eye contact wow. with people. All right, well, so now I just looked at the clock. It went so fast. <laughs> Do you have any other advice for art show newbies? Other advice? So for anybody, <laughs> for art shows. We're staying on this topic here. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think we covered it pretty well. Um, I know there's a lot more to it, but yeah, it's only yeah. an hour show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mean an hour went by? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I told you. It's. I was just looked. At, I was shocked myself. I just looked at the clock. Oh, is are we done? Or well, we have to wrap it up. I can't just stop. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> we have to have. We have to have a conclusion here. Huh? <laughs> so where can we find your work? Um, What's your website? Uh, well, my my name, Jack Miguelo, uh, uh, dot com. And it's M Jack Miguelo Photography dot com. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Miguelo is just put is Jack Miguelo. M E G E L A. Got it. Jack uh -huh. Photography dot com. Yeah. Just remember okay. Magilla Gorilla, you can't forget. Remember what? Magilla Gorilla. Magilla Gorilla. Yeah, that's oh, you can't I forget like my name. that. <laughs> ah. 
So that's your website. We already know you don't really have a Facebook page. <laughs> or I three. do. I do you put some three. things on Facebook <laughs> when 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 we're going to do a show. I'll put something on. I'll say okay. I'll say Cambier Park Saturday. You know, come on down. Okay, something so like that. they can follow you on oh, Facebook yeah, yeah. as well. So. But I don't put a lot of stock in that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. And we yeah. are going to have show notes, so we're going to talk about this. And I forgot to ask you first. Maybe you could give us a few pictures to put in the show notes, so they can see a little bit about I you. Want me to send you some JPEGs for me? Yeah, some low oh. resolution with your name on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely low and, resolution. Because <laughs> Heather will type up the show notes and everything we talk about. She she puts them in bullet form. She's really good at it. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll do that. So thank you. And and uh, thank you, audience, for listening or watching, whatever. Um, please let me know about Cuba if you're interested and also about Mount Dora. Uh, next week on the Understand Photography, we're going to have John Bob Carlos, who is using his photography for activism. So that should be a pretty interesting show. Remember, we record this live on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash understand photography. Then we put it on YouTube by Monday, the following Monday, and also on, on uh, as a podcast. So however you listen to iTunes or SoundCloud, however you listen to the podcast, you can listen to us while you're in the car. How about that? <laughs> I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching episode number 90 of the Understand Photography Show. We'll see you next Friday. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get up!